Hi, I'm Andrea from Zart, and today I'm gonna to show you how to make a botanical print postcode. Um, this will be a great exercise for your students to explore what's growing in your local area, your local surrounds. It's a really nice link um, to incorporate First Nations and Torres Strait Islander histories and cultures. And it also links into science um, with a botanical um, slant. So what we're going to be doing to create this is we're going to be using our gel plates um, and we're going to be using things that we find in our area. So I've collected these seed pods, like a variety of seed pods. So this one, and I'll just refer here, this is a, um, a Karajong seed pod or an Illawarra, Illawarra flame tree seed pod. So it's a really nice, interesting shape. Um, I've got a coastal banksia seed pod. So they're everywhere in my immediate neighborhood. Um, and these are she oak seed pods. So just with your students, anything that they find um, in the school ground and just lying on the ground that's fallen from a tree. Um, it could be leaves, it could be flowers anything that's sort of getting them to link with what is growing in their area. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to create a background for our postcode. So we're going to end up with something that looks like this, but we need to have a base color. So what we will do is we will get our acrylic paints and I am using some of the colors of Australia school colours because I think seeing as we're doing something that represents what is happening locally, I think that ties in quite nicely. So I'm just randomly applying a bit of paint. And with this one, because we're doing backgrounds, it doesn't matter if it's too, the paint is too thick and juicy first. Um, if you've got too much, that's okay because you can do a couple of runs of your background. So we're just going to blend some colour in and I can see that yellow is kind of a bit splotchy so I might even add a little bit of orange just to you know juice things up a little bit make it a bit more vibrant and that's now creating some nice orange splodges The paper I'm using today is all purpose paper. It's 140 GSM. So it's a nice weight that will take a fair bit of paint and moisture because we will be layering things up on this paper. So just press that down. And then we have a beautiful background. So it doesn't matter if it's like, I've, I can see there's some little bits that are uneven. It really doesn't matter. It's not a perfect um, a perfect thing that we're trying to get. And with this piece of paper, I'm just going to use that as my piece to lift off anything that's still stuck on there on my plate. So that's pretty much lifted off there. So now we have the fun part. Now we get to press our seed pods into our plate. So if I have, I'm not sure, this is a, a background that I created before and it's nice and dry. So I might actually use that one. So this is the colour that the actual marks will come out in your seed pod impressions. So you want something contrasting to press your seed pods into to allow the shapes to be revealed. So I think I'll use this turquoise. That seems like a, a nice contrasting colour if I can get the paint out of the tube. So with this one, we want a nice layer of paint. This one, you don't want it to be too thick because as you press your seed pods into your plate, it gets really covered with paint and then there's lots of cleaning that has to happen between pressing your seed pods in. So 
Oh, we'll just get a, that looks like a good coverage. Okay, so let's go. And the nice thing is because these gel plates are squishy, they really pick up the patterns. You can press. Now, one thing that you have to be careful of um, is just using things that are really sharp, sharp edged um, seed pods or items if you press them in might damage your gel plate. So you don't want to have anything that's, you know, super sharp. But otherwise, I think we're getting some really nice marks happening. Um, this Banks DSE pod is really fun because it's like a textured roller. So we're just going to start on this corner here and roll that across our plate. Look at that. So much fun. And now we're going to use our she oak little pod and this will be a nice little textured roundish sort of a mark. And I can see the one thing you do need to be aware of is sometimes the actual little seed parts of what you're using will pop out and add for another little bit of texture. But I think just keep playing around with your shapes and where you're pressing them and how you're pressing them to come up with a composition you like. And the aim with this too is because we're going to be blacking out um, around our postcode numbers, we really want to fill in the whole of this um, plate with our shapes. So I might put another couple of these. I really like this shape. So I'll do some more on this side and maybe one more in there. Okay, that's looking good. I'm happy with that. So now I will take my sheet of background that's already dry and you don't have to marry it up precisely, but kind of roughly in the ballpark of where your background color is. We'll just rub over that. And then the fun reveal. So there we go. Yeah, that's lovely. I really like that. So you can see how using contrasting colors with your layers um, really brings out all of the shape. So because I used a very pale or a lighter colored background and I used a darker color to press my seed pods in, you get a really nice contrast. Um, here's one that I did when I was testing this out and you can see the top layer, whilst the colors are contrasting, there was a lot of that turquoisey paint on the top and you real I couldn't really get really nice impressions of the seed pods and then when I did press down it sort of squished its way out a little bit so that one um, isn't as clear it's still lovely but it's just not as clear um, and this one you can see as well maybe the color in the background um, wasn't contrasting as much as this one um, and then I've got this one which is a very high contrast again so I mean, at the end of the day, it's up to your students what colours they love. And that's part of the experiment as well. Seeing when in the printing process when you're doing a double print like this, um, how one colour reacts against the other colour. But for now, I will put my plate aside because we just need to leave in the classroom our prints to dry. So this might be um, a two class activity. Um, and now I will turn this into my postcode. So my, co my postcode where I live is um, 3204. So what I'm going to do is just do some big exaggerated numbers. And you can see by this one here, it's not a linear thing. You don't have to have your postcode numbers written in, in one line as they would appear. You can jumble your numbers around. It really doesn't matter that's part of the creative process. So I might actually do these ones here and have two numbers at the top and two numbers at the bottom. So just with a pencil, you just want to draw out a nice broad 
outline of the numbers. So the idea with this is to try and take up as much of that printed surface as possible and have your numbers as thick as possible so that you can still expose all of the nice print that you've worked so hard to get. And then I can do my zero. There we go. So once you've got your outline, um, you can use some colour sti slicks. And I'm going to use these lovely Colours of Country colour slicks. Because um, I think it's another nice way to tie in um, just looking at where you are, especially if you are going to tie this into um, First Nations and Torres Strait Islander curriculum. Um, we here, where I'm filming this, are on Bunurong country. Um, so it's a nice introduction, like what, where is your class? Where does your school sit? What country is that? What things, what um, bits of flora are native to that area? And it's a really nice sort of a tie in to that curriculum. So what I might do, I might do a lighter color over the top. I think I'll use this nice ochre colour. And then what I'm going to do is just trace around the lines that I have for my postcode numbers. And these colour slicks are so beautiful and creamy. This is a very nice, quick and easy part of the process. So once we've traced around it, then we can just block in all of the area around our numbers. All right, that looks nice and covered there. So as you can see, all of the area around the numbers is pretty much blocked out. And what you're left with is um, your postcode numbers with the beautiful prints of what is growing locally in your area. Um, what would be really lovely is if you do this activity with your students is to post it up on our teachers forum, the Zart Teachers Forum, and that way you can compare all the different postcodes from where you are, like if you say this is our postcode, we're in this area, and then students can see the different marks, the different flora that has been collected from each different area. But for now, I hope you have enjoyed that uh, activity and I look forward to seeing your results and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.